Thank you for, for the cross. We thank you for your goodness tonight in this room. We, uh, we just thank you for already letting us know uh, that you're here, Lord. We just uh, pray that you would continue just to uh, manifest yourself. Lord, you'd continue to dwell here with us as we continue to worship you just through, through prayer together, through uh, opening up your word together, and, and through fellowship. And uh, we do pray for Brother David tonight and just pray that you would overflow your heart through his mouth this evening, and we just thank you for in advance for the word you have for us. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. 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 Thank y'all very much. Live is better than Memorex. Very much so. How's everybody tonight? Boy, we got a good crowd. Good crowd. Y'all are scattered out again, though. Golly, I got to look everywhere. Um. So I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm, I'm excited about this message, and I think I say that almost every time. I'm like Paul. He loves every verse in the Bible. 
and it's his favorite one. And so I, I'm excited, I guess, about, <laughs> about the subject. But, but I really had fun researching and studying on this subject of angels. And uh, I think a lot of people are kind of interested in it because it is a, uh, it's just an interesting subject in the Bible. And uh, before we get in, I probably need to get, what did y'all do with those microphones? I might need to get one of those. Renee, if you could get yours hot. That way, because I imagine we're going to have some comments over this. But um, while, the, while she's doing that, would you turn with me? It's, it's going to be kind of a different verse that I'm going to do as my text verse. It's in Colossians. Thank you. I just, just, I'll, I'll turn it on. It's in Colossians 1, 15. That's where we're going to start. Colossians 1, 15. And I think this is an important verse about angels because it's important to keep angels in the right perspective, okay? And so that's a little bit of why we're here. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, oh, fallacies, maybe not a good word. Uh, I need Patty again here. There's a lot of speculation. There you go. It's a lot of speculation on angels. And so, so we're going to try to dig in there and see what the Bible has to say about angels and what's maybe not what's true and what's maybe false and some of the things that we get to see all the time. Okay, Colossians 1.15 says this. He is the image of the invisible God. So this is talking about Jesus right here, okay? The firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in all things, and in him all things hold together. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word, Lord. I just thank you for how you uh, haven't left us in the dark, Lord. You gave us your word, and it speaks even today, Lord, as if we'll just dig in there and read it. We thank you how you love us and you take care of us, Lord. And, and uh, just open our minds and our hearts to this subject tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, why did I start out with that verse? It's because I think it's important to realize that angels are created beings. Okay? They're not gods. And they don't need to be worshipped. And so, uh, and just like the text verse said, angels were created by God for him. Okay, and uh, you know if if you've read the Bible, you realize that that there was a rebellion in heaven, right? And some of the angels fell. Do you think that took God by surprise whatsoever? No, it didn't. It didn't take God by surprise whatsoever. So these are created being, beings. Uh, does it? You know, whenever I got to to reading this about this, I was really amazed. Uh, of how many scriptures talk about angels and how many times angels show up in the Word. I feel like I'm in a barrel. And so there's a bunch. I mean, it's a bunch of times. Can any, anybody have a, like a favorite angel story in the Bible? Now, I don't want your personal story yet. We'll get to that in a minute if you have one. But I want what, you know, just to, off the top of your head, what's your favorite angel story in the Bible? Anybody? The birth of Christ. The birth of Christ. That's right. The, the angels, it said a heavenly host, didn't it? Uh, and and who, did they, who did they announce it to? It's kind of interesting. Shepherds, right? It, it wasn't to the kings. It wasn't to the Pharisees and the priests and all them over there, right? It was for some lowly shepherds out in the field. So that's kind of, that's kind of an interesting deal. But golly, Jay. <laughs> Can y'all hear me okay? Everybody? Okay. Um, anybody else? Come on now, there's a bunch of angel stories in the Bible. <laughs> okay, and Balaam, yeah, and that's, that was with Balaam. I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. That's a good one. Sure is. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah, sure did. She said when, when uh, they went... <laughs> they went When they went to Abraham and told him they was going to have Isaac, right? going to have a child to Sarah and so that's another anybody else have a favorite y'all yeah yeah that was that's not yeah that's not that was God there so that's right that's right Gabriel came to Mary that's right sure did 
sure did. That's a interesting topic, and we'll talk about that in just a bit, little bit more. So there's a few things that I wanted to kind of get. Uh, I just made a list of stuff that I wanted y'all to understand about, about angels, okay, and what the Bible ha actually has to say. Like I said, there's a lot of speculation uh, about angels and stuff like that, so uh, I just kind of made a list of it, and then we'll kind of talk about each one of them. First, uh, they are created beings, okay? In other words, they, they, uh, they were created by God. And so uh, we can tell by the, by the word that they fell whenever there was a, the rebellion in heaven. They fell before Adam and Eve, okay? Okay, how do we know this? How do we know that happened before? The serpent, right? The serpent in the garden. That's right. That's right. Sorry, Satan was a garden. Satan is an angel, right? He was an angel. And so we do have a, uh, we have the fallen angels and we have the holy angels. It was a good way to keep them separated, all right? Um, angels are not bound by time, okay? So, and they're also eternal. So once they're, they don't die, in other words, okay? And so they're, they, when they were created, they've been, since that time, they were created, and they will be forevermore. How do we know this? How can, how can we know that's, that's a true statement by what the Word has to say? Well, we see Michael and Gabriel in the Old Testament, right? And we also see them in the New Testament all the way into Revelation, right? And so they don't die. They don't, they're, they're eternal beings, all right? Um, not all angels have wings. I know that might shock some of you, but not all angels have wings, all right? And so it appears in the Word, if you'll read the Word, that some angels have wings, and there's, a, there's different classes of angels, okay? Or, and I'm not sure class is the right word, and I don't know if rank would be a right word, or if they all have different jobs. Now, I think there is a rank system because I'm going to get to that in just a second. But uh, not all of them have wings. Now, can y'all, do y'all know the ones that do have wings? What they're called? Anybody? Cherubims. Cherubims. And there's another one. Seraphims. Seraphims. That's right. Now, where is the first place that we see cherubs in the Bible? Cherub, cherubims in the Bible. In where? In Genesis. Where in Genesis? At the Garden of Eden. What happened there? You, can you tell the story? Do you know the story? No. Okay. I'll tell it to you. Whenever Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, remember he guarded the way with what? Cherubims. Okay. They guarded. He put two at the, at the way to the tree of life. And so they're probably, I would imagine, still there. Still there. Okay. They're still guarding the way to the tree of life right now. And so that's the first, that's actually not the first time we see an angel in the Word. The first time is in the garden with when Eve, with Adam and Eve, right? That's the devil. And so, uh, so but that's the second time, is, is that time. So that was cherubim. And they're used uh, not very many times. Those, those two words were not used very much times in the Bible. In fact, seraphim is only used uh, twice in the Bible, and it's only in one chapter, and that's in Isaiah. Y'all remember when, uh, when Isaiah had seen the throne, and a, a, a seraphim flew, took a coal from the, from the altar and touched his lips with it? That was a seraphim that did that, okay? Anytime you see those creatures, they do have wings. Now, they, some of them have more than one set of wings, right? There's, uh, if you remember in the Word, they have some that cover their eyes, some that they fly with, and some that do what? Uh, that's a good question. That's a hard word. And there's actually two different spellings, okay? There's a, uh, if you look in the King James, it spells a little bit different than in like the New King James because I had to do a little search in there. I've got it wrote down. Seraphim is S-E-R-A-P-H-I-M. Like I said, that's used two times, and that's in Isaiah, both of them in Isaiah, okay? Uh, of course, cherubim is used also. Where else do you see cherubims in? In the where? On the Ark of the Covenant. Very good, Renee. In the tabernacle, right? So those, and it's used a lot. That word is actually used a lot because of the tabernacle. And what, you know, they, he told the children of Israel to build the Ark and the angel, you know, the cherubims, it touched their wings over the, the uh, mercy seat. And so 
Um, but not all angels have wings. Why, how do we know this? How do we know that not all angels have wings? Because they're seen in the Bible and they don't have wings, right? <laughs> so in other words, there's a lot of encounters in the Bible where we see angels, but yet they don't have wings. Because we know that, number one, that uh, there's several times that the people, men, would see them and not realize they were angels, right? And so, so I think it's safe to say, now, can they have angels? Could they make wings? I don't know. I don't know that. That's speculation again. But, but we do know that they were seen in the Bible many times and they don't have wings, okay? So whenever I said that there's classes of angels, I think, like I said, I, maybe ranks might be a better word for it. And, and so we know this because that um, if, you, if you ladies that are studying Daniel, you, you know about the angels that, that come and visit Daniel, right? So who was it? I'm going to give you a little test. Who was it that came and saw Daniel? You have to read hard to know this. No, it wasn't Michael. It was Gabriel, that's right. Now, they talked about Michael, and that's why you get kind of confused because the first thing you think is that it's Michael that's going to see him, but it's not. Michael was the one that got delayed, okay? He was the one that was fighting with the prince of Persia, right? And so um, it's, you have to read real close there because I was, because I was kind of confused at first because I thought it was Michael. I thought it was Michael that had visited him, and what I was trying to do was trying to figure out, okay, We've got Gabriel, who kind of seems like the announcing angel, okay? In other words, he, you know, he announced Mary, right? He announces many things. He's kind of, to me, the, the announcing angel. Uh, he, was, he, he, went to, he was the one that went to Elizabeth. I mean, I'm sorry, not Elizabeth. Uh, Zach, Zachariah, that, that told, told him that, that uh, Elizabeth was going to have a child, John the Baptist, okay? Um, then you see Michael, and Michael's kind of the warrior angel. Okay, he's also called the arch, the arch, archangel. Okay, and so, uh, but in that conversation in Daniel, he called Michael the prince. Uh, let's see, how did I write that down? Chief prince. So he said one. He said he he Gabriel told Daniel about Michael that he's one of the chief princes. Okay, and so. Uh, I think that can tell us that there's rank in angels. And see what I'm saying? And, and we also have, and I didn't look this up, that, that uh, at one time Satan was the, maybe the top angel. Would that be, does anybody have any knowledge of that? Or if that's just hearsay, I'm not sure, because I didn't check that out, to be, be honest with you. But that's, I've heard that before. Yeah, he was the, uh, I've heard he was the choir director. You know, like I said, some of that might be speculation, so we'd have to do the study on that to, to see. But, um, um, right, yeah, right, right. And so, um, so, that, so I think that we can say that there are definitely classes, ranks, and we don't know what they are, but uh, I think that, that you could say that that would be true. Um, who? Hark the Herald Angels? I don't know. <laughs> Good question, Dad. I, I hadn't heard about him. Hark the Herald Angels? Yeah. Uh, angels don't marry like we do, okay? Um, they don't marry. And so because of that, uh, it does say that in, in, in some of the verses in the Bible that they don't, they're not like us, they don't marry. But now, they can take on the form of a human. Okay, and we're going to read about that. That's one of the things that I wanted to discuss. When the Bible begins to begin, is there a beginning? Well, um, that's actually one of them that I was going to... Most of the time, there's only one time in the Bible where an angel is referred to as a female. Okay, Only one time. All other times, of course, the names that we have are all masculine names. Gabriel, Lucifer, you know, Michael... Um, any other time also that they're done, they're, they're usually referred to as he, okay? And I'm on, this is one of the important things that I want to teach you about today. In the Old Testament, whenever you heard the phrase sons of God, that was talking about angels, okay? And we're going to read some verses about that in just a second. So sons would make you think that they're masculine, okay? Um, 
uh, and, and there's another, the other point I'm going to talk about is, y'all heard, probably heard the word nephilim. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. They took, uh, they took on the form of humans and, and uh, had relations with women on the earth. And so we're going we're gonna to go through that in just a second. So it would make you think that, that angels are masculine. Uh, but there is one reference in, in the Bible that talks that, that says it that it could be possibly a female. So I did find that. Um, okay. There's only a couple of, and I'm going to get y'all to help me out on this, the, false, the falsities that we've thought about about angels, okay? So uh, I know one for sure. There's a lot of people believe that when you die, you become an angel, okay? Not true. <laughs> That's not, that is not a fact, okay? And so there's a lot of, uh, I, I think a lot of people believe that the, you know, when they die, they're going to become an angel. That doesn't, that's not right. So can y'all think of any other? I mean, there's, of course, the pictures that we see. What's the first picture y'all think of whenever you see, when you talk about angel? Floating on a cloud with a little baby face, right? And a, and a girl. Uh, it's a, usually a, a feminine-looking person that's an angel. Um, what else? Uh-huh. Okay. So you see kind of a warrior as an angel, right? Good. That's good. Yeah. You see that as an angel. Okay, well, like I said, there's a whole lot of pictures. If you look at a picture, you know, if you look up angels or something, you're going to see a picture of a woman and some of them floating on clouds and stuff like this, you know, and... Uh, any of anybody else can think of a falsity or something that's not true about you know that we've been kind of doped into believing. Do we have our old angel? Okay, that's a good question. Do we have our own guardian angel? Well, yeah, it's not it's not um, it's definitely not taught in the Bible that we have our own personal angel. Could it be? I have, I mean, it's I guess it's possible. That was one of my next questions. How many are there? How many angels are there? Anybody know? One for every human. So, so that be one for every human that's ever been born? Or can one angel do more than one person? See, I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> it's just speculation. But, <laughs> but anyway, now the Bible does have the Bible does say something. Uh, it, it really the only reference about you having an angel that would be over you, and it's really talking about Christ is in Psalms when it says that that He will give them charge over you, so they won't your foot won't dash against a stone. You remember, and that's the scripture that that Satan used to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. Okay, and he said, "Throw yourself down, and the angels won't let you." you know, so, so that. A lot of people take that verse and they'll say, okay, we've got our own, you know, angel guarding over us. I don't know, doesn't say, but that is, uh, you know, some people believe it. Some people believe they do have their own, own guardian angel. Um, so as far as how many are there, the Bible says they're innumerable. That means there's a bunch, okay? So we also know that, that some of them fail, right? So how many of them fail? A third? Okay, that's what that's. I agree with that, and I think you can find that in Revelation that that, that that's where that the the thought process that two thirds were good and one third fell, and so I think you can make a good argument for that. It doesn't actually come out just and say that, but I think you can make a good argument for that. So uh, a, a comfort about that is if there's twice there's two thirds good, right? And one third bad, so that's a good. That's a comfort. There's more of us than there are of them, so that's a good. That's a good thing, right? It was really rebellion, is what it was. Um, they. That's a good question. Um, they definitely rebelled because they know, they know who the real true God is. Okay, many times in the Bible. 
that it says, you know, even when Jesus had the, the, uh, the confrontation with the, with the person, the Gadarene, you know, the, the, and so whenever he did that, he, uh, you know, the, the demons knew exactly who he was. Now, that's another question right there. Are demons angels? That's a good, that's it's really just once again, that's speculation because we really don't know whether not the same as. That's a, you know, like I said, that's once again speculation because the Bible's not clear on it. Um, a lot of people believe that the demons are the fallen angels. Uh, I think you can make a pretty good argument for that, but you can also make an argument it might not be. Once again, I try to not, you know, I at least want you to know when there's speculation and not something that the Bible for sure says. That's what I, you know, because we can go way off on a bunch of bunny trails if, if we're not careful. Um, but they, it does say in, he, in Hebrews that, the, that they're innumerable. Uh, if you'll remember, uh, Jesus said about him being on the cross, he said, I could call 12 legions of angels. Remember that? Um, so we know there's a bunch of angels, right? We know there's a bunch of them. Um, what are angels? In other words, what is their job? What do y'all think the job of an angel is? Okay, messengers, that's a good. Servants. Servants. Ministering spirits is probably the, I think that's the actual definition of an angel is a ministering spirit. They, uh, they're exclaimers, proclaimers, okay? Um, they're warriors. Okay, they fight. They're also executioners. They're going to execute judgment, right? The whole book of Revelation is almost uh, a lot of angel activity in the book of Revelations, right? They pour out the bowls of wrath, the bowls of judgment. Uh, so they also, there's bat, you know, they fight, they fight battles. There's battles that we can't even see that's going on, right? Um, where are they? Where are the angels right now? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't believe that they are. I think that they were created, and that's it. Yeah. You know, really, we're eternal beings. Am I right? We're, we're eternal beings. We're not going to die. Our, our bodies will die, but our, but our, uh, so, our soul will not die. Okay, our spirit won't die. And so. Uh -huh. Yeah, they were cast down. They were cast down on the earth, is what the Bible says. Yeah, they. And, and in Revelations, it says that the that the lake of fire was actually made for who? The devil and his angels, right? That's right. And so, uh, I. I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I don't think that all of them are there. Um, do, do what? I think you can also look at like in the demons. See, here's another crossover between the demons and the angels. Because when Jesus, remember what they asked Jesus when he, whenever he wanted to cast them out of the demoniac. Remember, he they asked him. They said, "Don't send us to the abyss, right?" But and they so they asked him if they would send him into the swine, and so he allowed that to happen. And so evidently he can cast them into the abyss. And so. Once again, a lot of that stuff we just don't know. Um, there you go. Did y'all hear that? Let me read that. Second Peter 2 4 says, For God did not spare even the angels who sinned. So there's your question about sinning. He threw them into hell in the gloomy pits of darkness where they are being held until the day of judgment. Okay? All right. Uh, and we're not ever going to get through if I don't get going because I've got, still got a lot to go.
Um, okay, so where are they? I, we never did get to answer the question of where are the angels right now. Spiritual realm, okay. Anybody else want to take a shot at that? They're in heaven, okay. Where's that? <laughs> okay, we got. Yes, ma'am. I got you. I, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> Martha's favorite verse, Ephesians six twelve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You know, I, I really think that the angels are in a different dimension than what we are in. And I, and I don't know that we can fully grasp all that. Um, just like I think that, that heaven's in a different dimension that we're in. Um, and, and, and the reason that I say this is, is because of a couple of different uh, instances in the Bible. Do y'all remember when Elisha was, was with his servant and they were fixing to fight a war? And his, his, his servant got up and looked out and he saw all those armies surrounding them. And Elisha prayed and said, God opened his eyes. There's more of them than there are, you know, there's more with us than against us. And he, what did he, he opened his eyes and what did he see? Just a whole bunch of warriors right there. And so they're there. They're just in a different dimension. We just can't see them, okay? And so I think right now, I mean, there could be angels in here right now. We don't know exactly, you know, where they are or what they're doing. Uh, you know, we can, we know that, that, uh, that just like in Daniel, that, that there's wars going on, there's fighting going on that we don't understand. Just like, you know, Michael was fighting with the Prince of Persia. Most people think that's Satan. Um, and so uh, he was delayed 21 days, right? So, so I think that, that, like I said, they're in a different dimension. Balaam, I want to talk about that one. Balaam, and, his, and when he was riding the donkey, if you remember, he's riding down the road. The donkey stopped. Balaam kept beating on it. Well, the donkey could see the angel. But Balaam couldn't. And so he turned him this way, and the angel would go over there, and he turned him. Finally, you know, finally, he was able to, to, to see the angel in the end. But, uh, but they're just in a different dimension. Um, let's see, what else do I want to get to? I don't know that we're going to get all the way through everything that I wanted to get to. I, I want to get to one of the things that I really want to get to is an important verse, I think, about the power and the respect, okay? And that's in Jude. Go to Jude 1, verse 8. Okay, we're going to start with 8. Jude 8 says, 1, 8. Yet in the same way these men also by dreaming defile the flesh and reject authority and revile against angelic majesties. But Michael, the archangel, when he disputed the, with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Okay? So, what I wanted you to realize about this is that we don't have any power against angels whatsoever. Okay? The only power we have whatsoever is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So don't think that you can go fight an angel on your own. <laughs> it's not, I mean, you just... Michael didn't even say a bad accusation against the devil. Okay? That's how, I mean, Michael the archangel, that's how important it is, I think. What did he say? He said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rebuke you. So I, I think that we... That, and if you'll read a little bit in Jude there, it's talking about people getting a haughty spirit thinking that they are better, bigger and better than what they are. The only power we have against angels, against demons, against wicked, wickedness in high places is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, We don't have any power whatsoever. I mean, they are a different, different level of, 
I mean, if you read Revelation, you see what the angels are going to do. They're powerful, very powerful beings, okay? And so um, I think that's an imp- I wanted to, I wanted to get to that. And like I said, I don't know that I'm going to get all the way through. Um, I wanted to get to the to win the sons of God, okay? Because that can be a little bit confusing. So in the Old Testament, whenever you see the phrase sons of God, that is talking about angels. In the New Testament, it's not necessarily, okay? Because it says that, you know, there's several places in the Bible in the New Testament that says that we will become sons of God, okay? Right? And so it's not talking about angels there, but, but I'm going to give you two incidences, incidences when it talks about sons of God. One of, first of them is in Job. Go to Job 1. And y'all remember this story whenever... Job 1, verse 6. Here it goes. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Okay, there's that phrase, sons of God. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord, said, from roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. And the Lord said to, said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Da, 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 y'all know the story, right? Okay, so, so sons of men, I mean sons of God, is, ta- is referring to angels, okay? They, they were able to come before God, all right? Interesting, I mean that to me is just fascinating, really. Uh, turn with me to Genesis, and then we're, we're going to talk about that, and then I'm probably going to be about out of time. We'll have to maybe cook, pick up this. Go to Genesis 6. Also talking about the sons of God. We're going to start with verse 1. Now it came about when men began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he is also flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be shall be 120 years. And the Nephilim, there's that word, were on the earth in those days, and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Okay? And then, of course, then it goes in, then the Lord saw that wickedness was great on the earth and that every intent and the thought of his heart was, was evil continually. It goes on and, the, and uh, then you have the flood. Okay? So we see that angels can do some some bad, weird things, okay? And so uh, they're just, they're really kind of, there's a lot of speculation and there's a lot of stuff that we just don't know and don't understand. I think one day we will, I believe it. Um, Some comforting thoughts that I want to leave you with because we're out of time basically is I I believe and I think you can back it up with scripture that, that, uh, that when you die, I think you'll be carried in the presence of the Lord by the angels. How do I know that? What what do y'all what story in the Bible talks about that? Anybody know? Lazarus and the rich man. You remember when Lazarus died, he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Okay, so I believe that that uh, we can have a comforting thought that that angels are there waiting for us. Uh, like I said, I don't know if we have our own personal angel or not. Um, and I wanted to do this, and I, and, and, and I don't know how many angel stories we have. Have y'all ever had an encounter with an angel? You know, the Bible says that we can entertain angels unawares. Okay, so I do think they're still active uh, on the earth. I think they're still doing stuff. I think that uh, there's many stories of things that just, they, they can't be, you know, unless there's a miracle. You know what I'm saying? And... Uh, Anybody have an angel story? Miss Melba, hold on. Just. Back when we started the prison ministry, Charlie and I made lots of trips to Huntsville and back. And night on Highway 19, uh, it had been a lot of rain, and we 
we went through an area where the water was standing. And we really thought we could get through it, but we didn't. We stalled out, and there were several other people that had stalled out. Some boys came along and pushed us up out of the water on dry ground, but our car wouldn't crank. And then over the hill came this car that had, it was a lady with a car that had some stuff that you spray on your engine and some booster cables. And she was able with, with, you know, with her uh, equipment to help us get our car started. And so Charlie unhooked the cables and turn, put the hood down, turn around to thank her. And she was nowhere to be found. And there was no way that she could have already turned her car around and got, you know, turned and went the other direction. There was no way she would have went in the direction where we had just come out of the water. So we, to this very day, say that was, that was an angel because she was just gone. Anybody else have an angel story? I, uh, one time I was stranded in Dallas, and I had put my bags in this locker, and they got stolen, and they had my ticket in it. And we had talked to the manager, and he took so long coming back. He went to look at the camera. Well, at that time, a bus was coming in unloading passengers, and I was standing at the desk, and this man walked up to me, and he said, is there a problem? I said, well, my bus ticket got stolen, and all I got is like $7. And he said, how much more do she need for the ticket? And the lady told him, and he said, and he paid it, and I told him, I said, let me get your name, your address, so I can send the money back to you. He said, well, my name is Dakota, and I'm doing, I'm doing what the Father sent me to do. Well, at that time, a bus was loading up, and he went out to the left. I sat right there and watched everybody load on that bus. He was gone. Man. You know, I, don't, I definitely think you can look at different stories in the Bible where angels ministered to, you know, the people in the Bible, uh, saved people in the Bible like Peter, you know. Uh, I, I definitely believe that that can still happen today. I believe that, that uh, you know, just like, you know, you, these two stories, that that stuff still can happen. Um, uh, I definitely believe it. Anybody else have an angel story? Got one? We're almost out of time. This might be, have to be the last angel story. Uh, whenever I was uh, out in the world drinking and stuff, me and my brother-in-law had got drunk. Uh, to, you know, to make a long story short, I'm going to try to tell it in a hurry. He flipped the car. My two kids were thrown out of the car. My daughter was found wandering by one of the ambulance people. But the man that found my son, he said he was crying face down in the water and when I stepped out of the car the water was past my knee in the ditch so I don't know how he heard him crying but we tried to look for that person and he was gone after he saved my son yeah there's a I definitely think there's no doubt about it well y'all know me I got a song right and so <laughs> so I got a song that I want you it's actually a video and it's about angels okay and uh, you may or may not, I'm, I'm sure you've heard, you probably heard this song if you listen to Christian Radio, but you may not have heard, seen this video. It's pretty good. So, Chris, if you'd load that up. Somebody catch the lights back.
Chris, I don't think that's, that's the right video, but that's not the right song. Should say of official video. We might not watch the video. Okay. Dropbox for Business provides us a really secure app that allows